And so um, we want to look at understand what redemption is all about. Let's keep in mind that the central theme of the whole Bible is salvation. And the central person is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so God's plan of salvation is for total victory. Total victory over sin, over death, over hell, past, present, and future. And so salvation is really quite easy to understand. We have a Savior who came, who died for us, who was buried, who rose again on the third day, and uh, a Savior that we can put our faith and trust in. And uh, we also know it's quite complex because there are many, many words that describe what salvation is all about. Such words as justification and sanctification and glorification, reconciliation, spiritual death, what is atonement, what is expiation, what is substitution, what is regeneration, what is imputation, lots of words that are in the scriptures and are spoken of with regard to salvation. But do we really know what they're all about? And so uh, we've been going through on a communion Sunday, looking at words that associate it with salvation. So today we want to briefly look at the word redemption. Last week, uh, a few of us uh, were at Claire Hill's Bible study, and we met a, a lady there. And when we asked her about her faith, she said, Jesus is, our re is my redeemer. Now, if you heard that, what would redeeming mean for you? Could you explain that, that he is your redeemer? And so uh, we, we, we want to explain a little bit and focus on redemption today. So the word redeem means to buy out by paying a price. So redemption is all about paying a price, a ransom, to get something back or to set something free. And because people are so precious to God, there is no price that he is not willing to pay. The ultimate was that he gave his own son, even to the death of the cross that we celebrate at communion. Now, we know that redemption, to buy back by paying a price, was uh, seen in the Old Testament. The great picture of God's people, Israel, being redeemed out of Egypt. Being, by God's power and strength, delivered from the hands of Pharaoh and from the hands of all the gods that represent the Egyptians' gods. Because our God is a great God. And he made a way that was where there seemed to be no way, through the Red Sea and they were delivered. There was a great redemption, and we can read that about it in, in Exodus chapter 6. So God redeems his people from slavery because he loves them. Together, let's say John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So God sent his Son to rescue us, to rescue us. Love motivated him to send his son. And so when we think of redemption, in the New Testament, we have the picture of the Roman Empire, and there were slaves all over the place. There were slave markets where you could sell a slave and you can buy a slave in those days. And so only a free man could buy out a slave or redeem a slave from slavery. Some time ago, I was a chaplain in a long-term care home, and I met a lady from um, Trinidad, and she remembers the days when she was in her mid-90s, but she remembers the days when she was only six or seven, when after walk, working in the fields in Trinidad, they would go to the slave market. And she remembers that six or seven, seeing slaves being sold on the square. And so just as even in reason in our own lifetime, there were, there were slaves uh, at, at that time and even slaves today. So the application of this term of redemption is, has great significance for us as believers. Before we are redeemed, our condition was slavery. We were bought out. We were redeemed by a price. And so God purchased our freedom. And we are no longer in bondage to sin. We're no longer in bondage to Satan and or to the Old Testament law. We're no longer under the Mosaic law, we're under the law of Christ, which is the law of love. And so in Galatians 3.13, we see that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. From the curse of the law. The wages of sin is death. And so because Adam and Eve had sinned, we are sinners by birth. 
We are sinners by nature. Again, I remind you that we don't have to teach our kids how to be bad. They figure that out on themselves. And so we are sinners by nature. We do wrong naturally, unintentionally. We're also born into sin. We are sinners by birth, but we also are sinners for, for when we choose to do wrong. As last Sunday, we talked about Abram, Abraham and Sarah and how they lied and how the lie made a mess of the situation. And so Christ redeems us from the curse of the law. And in Galatians 4, 4 and 5, God sent his son to redeem us, to redeem us, to buy us back and to adopt us, to adopt us. And so the idea of adoption is another picture of salvation. We're not born into God's family, so we are adopted into God's family. And having a full adoption, we have every right as though we were born into God's family. And so redemption has to do with being adopted, being given a gift. In Romans 3, 23 and 24, it says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift, the gift of grace, is redemption in Jesus Christ. So when we look at redemption, very, very briefly, there are three aspects of redemption. The first is that we are redeemed from the marketplace. When the, when the new owner went into the marketplace and picked out a slave that they were going to buy, they bought that slave, they redeemed that slave, they paid a price, and they um, now belong to a new owner. You and I were under Satan's dominion before we came to Christ, and we were slaves to him, and Christ paid the ultimate price. He was the substitute for us. He came not to serve, to, to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom. His life was a ransom. His life was the price that was paid. So people are redeemed out of the slave market. So when an owner bought this slave, this slave was then taken out of the market. The slave was no longer bound to the previous owner, but under new management and a new owner. And so the Greek word here is agoraso, which means to buy, and ex agoraso means to buy and take out. If you go to a store, a retail store, and you buy something, do you pay for it and just leave it there on the shelf? Absolutely not. You take it out with you. And this is what God has done for you and I. When Jesus, when God paid the price, and Jesus paid the price for our sins, he not only paid for us, but he takes us out of that kingdom of darkness. We're under a new management. We're in a new family. We're a new creation in Christ. We're no longer bound to those things of the past. And so now we need to at least listen to a different drummer. We need to listen to a different voice because we belong to now a different owner. Think about a job you had in the past, okay? Um, if my previous job and my owner, uh, my boss five years ago calls me up today and says, Paul, I want you to come in for an eight-hour shift, what do I say? Absolutely not. You're no longer my boss. And so if Satan calls you and asks you to do this and tempts you to do that, all you can say is, no thanks, I'm no longer under your control. I'm no longer in your family. You have no hold on me anymore. I am indeed free to follow Christ. And sometimes we have to understand that, that we need to leave that environment that God calls us out of to follow him. We see that in all of scripture. Matthew was a tax collector. He was making big bucks. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He had lots of money. But when Jesus came along and said, follow me, what did they do? They dropped everything. And they followed him. Are we willing to drop things and follow him? Like our brother Omo had a call from God to leave Africa to come to Canada. And so he listened to that call. And sometimes when God calls us to do something, our own friends and so on don't don't agree, and they try to talk us out of it. But when God calls, God will provide a way, and so we need to obey him. So we're redeemed from the marketplace, okay? Um, we've been taken out of that lifestyle we used to be in, and now we're living in a family home, in God's home, and we need to live a responsible and holy life, pleasing our master, our father, um, God in heaven. 
The other thing about redemption is that we are redeemed not only from the marketplace, we're redeemed by the blood. We're redeemed by the blood. In Egypt, when the people of Israel were redeemed, they were told to uh, kill a Passover lamb, and the blood was, was uh, painted on the doorpost. And they were redeemed because of the blood. When the angel of death came through, those that were under the cover of the blood were safe. They were delivered. They were rescued. And so we are redeemed by the blood and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which means that we are forgiven. The blood of the lamb means that the lamb died. And by his death, we have life. It's a death in exchange for our life. And scripture makes it very clear that the redemption is, in, is only possible through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing we can do with our sin. We cannot sell it. We cannot give it away. We cannot bury it. We cannot hide it. We cannot ignore it. It's always there in front of us. And it is through his blood that we are forgiven and we're cleansed. In 1 John 2, 2, it's the Apostle Paul says that Christ is the satisfactory payment. The only satisfactory payment for the sins of the whole world. The sins of the whole world. So we're redeemed from a marketplace of sin. We no longer need to live in the darkness of sin, in the kingdom of darkness, under Satan's control and manipulation. We can say no to those things because now we are redeemed and we are, have the power of the Holy Spirit and the dwelling of the Holy Spirit to live a life that pleases God. We're redeemed from the marketplace. We're redeemed by the blood. And we're redeemed, point number three, to be free to serve. When the owner went into the marketplace and bought that slave, that slave now was free to serve this new master, not to do whatever they wanted to do. So as you become a Christian and as you become a Christian, um, have you invested in God and served him your life? Or are you saying to yourself, I can put up my feet now, now that I'm saved, I'm on my way to heaven, so I can just relax, and when Jesus comes, I'll be ready to go to be with him. No, 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 no. We have been pay, uh, purchased, we have been taken out of the kingdom of darkness in order to serve him in the kingdom of light. At the top of our uh, notes, I encourage us to always think about, we gather together to, serve, uh, to study his word. We come together to worship him, but we also have to scatter and be witnesses for him where he places us. And so, have you spoken of him? Are you praying for those neighbors of yours? Are you making a prayer walk in your own community? Do people know that you're a believer where you work and where you um, are involved in? And so, God has called us to be free to serve him, set free from the marketplace. And we're reminded in, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that our body is the temple of God, that he indwells us, that we're not our own. We have been actually been bought with a price, and therefore we are to glorify God. A quick overview of redemption then is that um, God has redeemed us from the slavery of sin. He has bought us with his own precious blood. And um, he has freed us and redeemed us so we can serve him willingly and with love and devotion. How do we apply these things? Well, Norbert read earlier in Isaiah 40, comfort, comfort your people. And Isaiah and Jeremiah and Zechariah are prophets of the Old Testament. And what they always did was to look forward to God's redemption. God will redeem his people. And so, likewise, let's look forward to his coming again, his redemption. Let's look to the redemption that he has already brought in the death of the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all. That makes us thankful that uh, he has redeemed us. The second thing is that do you know that you're redeemed? Have you been redeemed? Have you asked Christ to become your redeemer, your savior? Because he has already provided the provision for you to be coming out of the slave market? Are you willing to go with him? Are you willing to accept his forgiveness and to serve him? Jesus' death brings redemption and forgiveness for all. Look forward to the redemption that he has for us. It will continue to come. It, it, we are celebrating it today, but we also look forward to his return when all of his redemption will be finished 
and we will be glorified and be with him in glory. As we look at the redemption, we realize that we have been redeemed and we belong to him, and that it is our duty to honor him in how we live out our lives. 2 Corinthians 6, um, 1 Corinthians 6, chapter, uh, chapter 6, verses 18 and 20, uh, reads as follows. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who lives in you, and you were given to you by God. Your body was given to you by God. You don't belong to yourself. God has redeemed us, and we belong to him. For God bought you with a very high price, so you must honor God in your body. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you send the Lord Jesus Christ to be our Redeemer, to buy us out of the slave market, to, uh, out of the kingdom of darkness, and to be brought into the kingdom of light. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you not only paid the price, but you called us out of that darkness into your light. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that uh, it is by your blood, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we are redeemed. That precious blood that can take away our sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus can cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the blood that was shed, for the life that was given as we celebrate the communion. We also recognize that we've been bought with a very high price and we don't belong to ourselves anymore. That we're free now from all the sins, sins and entanglements. Although we live in a corrupt world, we have the freedom and the joy in order to serve you. We thank you that the Holy Spirit indwells us, that uh, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, so we can serve you. Help us recognize what an awesome responsibility it is to be a, a redeemed people, and how blessed and how joyful it is that we belong to you and you belong to us, and nothing can separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. We're going to go to communion, and we ask the, um, the helpers to come and uh, help us with communion, and then we'll, um, we'll sing our final song. Thank you for the opportunity to celebrate communion. We thank you for the bread that was um, symbolized of the fact that it is your body that was broken for us. We thank you for the grape juice and the wine that we take that reminds us of the blood that was shed. And as we reflect upon it now, we give you thanks. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those that are online and those that are listening to us on phone. As we go into a communion, uh, we ask thy blessing upon them. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you now and forevermore. Amen. For those of you on the phone and online, we thank you for joining us today. Here and there as a congregation, we're going to communion, and uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, next Sunday. God bless.